Chapter 3.2, The Middle Ages, Part 3. This is going to be another long chapter. <laughs> so we left off with the Prophet of Muhammad in a Mughal miniature. And then we're going to get into pilgrimage. So central. these are central to all of our, three, our big three, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And uh, pilgrims travel to these important religious events and important religious sites. So... Um, there's some conflict because sometimes all three or two claim the same um, space, and we're going to get into that a little bit. But relics are important, holy relics. Um, so if you had a tooth or a body part of a saint or a holy figure, that was important, and then a reliquary was made. So this is, a, this is an example, and I haven't seen a lot of these. This is an actual human skull, the head of St. Alexander. So... Whenever I imagine this reliquary thing, I just imagine how are they getting all these different bone parts? Maybe they went back in the catacombs and pulled everybody apart. Or sometimes I just imagine them hacking these bodies up of these saints and so on. Because everybody wants to have a toe, a toe bone or a whatever. So it's, it's a little confusing to me. This is why I disconnect partly with this time frame. But this is his real skull. And then there is bronze uh, and silver repoussé, meaning um, tapped over the skull. So a thin sheet would be um, sort of, like not, not aluminum foil, it's not that thin, but it would be a very thin sheet and then a little hammer would be taken, maybe a soft hammer like a leather or um, wooden mallet, would just kind of tap this into the bone structure of the face and we would have metal over uh, bone is basically what's happening here. It's an actual human skull, so we have a relic, a bone, from a saint, and then this elaborate sort of decoration would occur um, with bronze and gems and so on, and enamel as well. So it's housing the skull. It's silver repose. Oh, the hair is where the bronze is. My apology. So this is more uh, bronze up here, that golden color, and the silver is the face. It's kind of a darkish silver with a bit of tarnish on it. So the small portraits below show the Pope flanked by two saints. So it's important to go to the church where the reliquaries were, and we're going to get into that in a little bit with the churches. So pilgrimage, pilgrimage for Jerusalem, that's the biggie. You know, We have people as far flung as um, Northern Europe and England, you know, and they want to make their way down to Jerusalem. Now, that doesn't always happen, and sometimes they just tour where some of the other relics are, because there are a fair amount of relics in Rome. Some things happened, you know, on Italian soil, uh, literally during the time of Christ and so on. So not everything is in Jerusalem or Israel. Um, some things are elsewhere. So anyway, the big thing is to go all the way to Jerusalem. That's the big one. The very devout people would go. And remember, there's a lot of people very concerned, a lot of uh, drama and, and uh, food shortages, weather changes, all kinds of things happening, uh, diseases. So there's a much higher state of religious belief and um, focus on um, making right with God, if you will. So the Dome of the Rock is a place where... We get into this conflict. So it's sacred for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And I'm going to skip out of here because the book has a better way to explain this. But the foundation stone is something that um, is the site of the beginning of the world, okay, for the Jewish people. Now, for the Muslims, they believe that that is the rock from which Muhammad ascended to heaven. And then to Jews and Christians, the site is also thought to be a place where Adam was created and where Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son. And remember, Abraham is very important to the Jewish people they, because they are the descendants of Abraham. So there's a lot of conflict with this one particular spot, and um, many events are believed to have occurred here. So we have the Dome of the Rock, um, and this is a, a um, in Jerusalem, and this was a... Um, uh, site for pilgrims. Sorry, I'm stumbling here a little bit. And the dome was originally built of solid gold, and then it was rebuilt with aluminum and gilded in 1993. 
It has octagonal walls covered with Arabic calligraphy. Sorry, I'm rushing with the uh, phrases from the Quran. So you can see this beautiful script that's going around here, pattern and decoration. Um, but this is a dome of the rock, and look how funny because we have like right there we have these onion domes here. Uh, for a Christian church over here. It's interesting. I believe that's Eastern Orthodox. I don't know for sure. Okay, so to go to Mecca and mosques, um, that's so we have the pilgrimages for the Christians, and we have pilgrimages for uh, the uh, Islamic people. So we have uh, two different things that are happening. Very important part, aspect of the religious um you know, uh, sh showing your faith. Okay. Uh, with, with Islam, we pray, uh, five times a day and the birthplace of Muhammad is Mecca. So we have a courtyard. Oh yes. The, the uh, it was explained to me by a friend, uh, from Iran. She said, um, ablutions, meaning you clean yourself so you wash your hands. Um, I'm not sure. I think you wash your face as well in the courtyard before you go to your call to prayer. In a, uh, the minarets are tall and they would call people to prayer. Now, um, these are pilgrims surrounding the, the Kaaba right here. And um, this is important for you to go here at least one point in time um, uh, in your life as an Islamic person, sorry, I'm trying to get the book, but this is in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So this is where we believe that uh, Muhammad was born, okay? So I'm going to read from the book here on this part. One holy place in addition to Mecca is Medina, or Medina, is a destination for Muslim pilgrims because it is a location of the tomb of Muhammad himself. Many pilgrims do visit the mosque often before or after a visit to Mecca in order to greet the prophet, but the limit them but limit themselves to a greeting as Islam prohibits worship of any other than Allah. Okay, so it's important to go. Although pilgrimage is important to many Christians, it has never been an obligation as it is in Islam. So this is more important for them to go to Mecca at some point in time. Uh, it's today it's draped in black and gold cloth, um, built by Abraham for God. That's what this, it's like a little tiny building in here. And it's surrounded by a mosque. We're in a mosque. We're getting to see this. Um, long time, I think, before photos were ever allowed in this space. Uh, the Prophet's Mosque in Medina in Saudi Arabia. Um, this is where he's believed to be buried, so you'd want to go to both places. These are the minarets here. That is where someone would stand at the five times of day to call people to prayer. Uh, really interesting to think about. Like You, you interrupt your day uh, multiple times in order to remind yourself that your worldly um, activities can't be as important as stopping for prayer. So a lot of interesting things about the Islamic faith. And it's actually, you know, uh, the numbers in terms of the world religion is quite high. So the Mirab is our prayer niche. You know how we have kind of like the apps in the Catholic Church where the priest would stand, um, or maybe you don't know. I mean, this is, these are things I had to learn as well. Uh, not being of either faith. So um, the prayer niche, the mirab, placed against the, is placed against a wall facing Mecca. So everything has to be f um, facing Mecca. And um, before GPS and before, oh, I don't know, I want to say electronic devices, if a Muslim person would travel, they would need to know the direction of Mecca from wherever they were in the world. And they had special devices for that. And I don't know much more to tell you that, but I have seen them worn uh, with people on airplanes. So facing wall, uh, the Qibla wall, is going to be what faces Mecca. So in, in a Christian church, we talk about um, 
the ox occident versus the orient. Orient is toward the east and the occident is the west. So a church is oriented. That's kind of where we change the, the uh, meaning of that word. The orientation is east and west. So that has more of a cardinal points direction for a church, but in a, a mosque that it has to face Mecca. So it could have an odd sort of construction just so that um, Mecca has a, a wall for people to face to be able to pray to. Okay. Tall green dome. This is Muhammad's tomb. I don't see. Oh, here we go. I see it right there. Okay. Now, this is an artwork. This is the view of the sanctuary at Medina. And um, this is a little watercolor. So this is another sort of miniature. It's a little bit bigger than a miniature. Miniatures are a little bit smaller than this. But opaque watercolor, that is also called gouache. And then what it is is watercolor with a little bit of chalk entered into it. So it has some opacity. So it's flat color. It's not translucent. Can't see through it. So this is our uh, little watercolor here. No humans, no faces, right? Just some pattern and um, some shapes. So it's our Tomb of the Prophet, uh, right with the arcades, the minbar or pulpit. I don't know exactly about that. It must be, maybe it's this one right here. Maybe that's there. This is a new piece to me, and I don't know all that much about this. So center in the garden, the Tomb of the Prophet's daughter, Fatima. She, is, she also translates to faith. Um, this, this name is used uh, in a variety of cultures but that is his, his daughter. Beyond the sanctuary walls are the tombs of his companions. Um, so let's see if we can see back here. I think we're thinking over here. So that's supposed to be a depiction. I think our, our painting um, is oriented like this would be the top and that would be the bottom. That's what I'm assuming because a lot of there's a lot of modern building around this whole thing. Um, to deal with probably the massive amount of crowds coming here. So I believe this would be the top and perhaps his um, his uh, companions would be buried there as well. Okay, we are going to switch gears now and get over to Europe again for the Romanesque art and the Christian pilgrimage. Um, so there's, there are the um, pilgrimages that go all the way to Jerusalem, but there's also this other very famous pilgrimage called the Santiago de Compostela. This goes uh, throughout a variety of areas, but mainly through Spain. So um, the burial site of St. James is there, but this was very popular. This still exists today, and I believe it's like 500 miles. It's quite long. And this official path started in, in France, and it would take several months. And along the way, you would stop at these churches that were built for the pilgrims, and we're going to get into the design and how that shifts, and there were relics along the way that you would want to go to. So that became very popular in the Middle Ages. This is Romanesque. So we're going to look at a map here, Santiago de Compostela here.